I'd like to tell you a little bit about our guest speaker for this evening because we go way back, way back, almost 24 years, I believe, from little, little bit of heaven. The awning that you see here is from the original little, little bit of heaven. And uh, for those people who don't know me, although uh, the Lord raised up a little bit of heaven back then, I was very, very young in my faith. I was not... Um, yet in any way really educated yet other than in the basic foundation. And then uh, in walks Andrew Nesselroth, who is just consistently speaking God's word. And it was just like, even if he walked in and be, isn't this a day the Lord has made? Should we not rejoice and be glad in it? And and I what I wasn't realizing is he was always speaking God's word. And so, of course, there was inside of me, you know, because your spirit now is being fed, I was just always drawn. Like he would walk in and it was like life walked in. Sunshine came in. And... Um, and I'd always like call like, oh, preacher man, preacher man. He'd look at me, don't call me that. <laughs> and here, what is he doing? He's preaching, man. So that was many, many years ago. But he did not know at that time the impact that he had on my life uh, regarding my faith walk and increasing my faith. So now fast forward, uh, this building becomes available. And as those of you know, this building was absolutely virtually impossible financially. On every level, there was no way we should be in this location. But God, because there was Andrew, who would come with me at the end of the night, we would close a little, little bit of heaven. And we would come here at 11 o'clock at night, and we would lay hands on the glass. And we would declare it for the Lord. And we would claim it for the Lord. And when no one else believed it or when no one else thought it was possible, he was the one who always spoke life that God could do all things and all things were possible. And so to have him come up and share this pulpit and co-labor with us is such an honor for me. Uh, and it always gets me emotional when I see him because he doesn't know. You know, God uses different people, so he probably doesn't even uh, know that. But even when he's on Facebook, he's speaking life to me. <laughs> so I am thrilled that he's here. He's the founder of the Believers uh, Authority Ministries. And, of course, he's bringing us a great message in due season. So he's going to bring us a message. Then we'll take a little bit of a break. And then uh, he's going to be praying for those of you who need healing. So it's going to be a very special night. So would you please welcome Andrew Nesselroth. Are we on? We're on. Okay. I can't guarantee that I'm going to stay behind this pulpit. Is that all right? That's all right, right? Okay. But it is good discipline sometimes. Well, um, it is a uh, privilege and an honor to come to you tonight. And thank you, Samantha, for the invite. I'm honored. I am honored. Because... Um, Without the Holy Ghost, I'm nothing. I'm just an empty shell. But thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because he's the one that's going to speak through me tonight. He's the teacher. He's the one that's going um, to give um, fresh revelation, fresh oil to us so that we could once again glorify God through his word. Amen? And I only have one motive to stand behind a pulpit and minister God's word. One motive only, because I love people. And that's my motive, because I love people. And um, I want to see people free. And you know why I want to say, you know why I want to see people free? Because God wants to see people free. And he's in us, you see? So if he's living in us, how many have Jesus living on the inside of them? Think about it. You have, you have the greater one living on the inside of you. And when we, when we tap into that compassion, you know, the Bible says that Jesus had compassion and he healed. See? When, when Jesus didn't have, he didn't just have sympathy. He didn't have sympathy. You know, sympathy, sympathy just says, well, um, yeah, well, isn't that too bad? Well, you pat somebody on the back. But compassion causes you to act. 
And you know, when you think about the selflessness of Jesus, I'm, I'm not going to necessarily follow my notes tonight. Is that right? Okay. I just want to listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, the selflessness of Jesus. You, do you know Jesus, John the Baptist was related to Jesus. Did you know that? And he was beheaded. And you know, Jesus was human too. He wasn't 50% God and 50%, you know, his deity. In, in Jesus in his deity, he wasn't 50% God and 50% man. He was 100% God. He was 100% man. You see? But he came to this earth, and the Bible says that he laid down all his heavenly rights. It became as a man so that he could conquer sin as a man, a perfect man. You see? See, that's the difference. He was perfect. But he, he was, um, you know, he, he had feelings just like we have feelings. And he had compassion. And here, uh, excuse me, here John the Baptist, his only, his only relative, his only um, um, living rel relative at the time, actually James was, was his brother, uh, but, but his closest relative, John the Baptist, was beheaded, you see? And he went off, he wanted to be by himself. And what happened? A great multitude followed him. And the Bible says he had compassion and ministered to them and healed him, healed them. So that's my goal tonight is to is to plug into the compassion of God and and feel the heartbeat of God for what he wants tonight for every single one of you. Because I love you and God wants you to be free. Amen. He wants every one of us to be free tonight. Amen. Father God, we come to you now in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you and we worship you. Lord, ever since I started worshiping you, I have never had a bad day. I have never, I don't have any bad days. I don't have any nervous days. Yes, I have challenges. But because I worship you, because I worship you with all my heart and all my being, all fear leaves, all nervousness leaves. And we could face tomorrow because you are alive. And I thank you for these precious people here tonight, Father. Lord, I've done everything I'm supposed to do to prepare. Now, Holy Spirit, I'm calling on you, the teacher, to teach your people tonight to speak through my lips, to work through this vessel of clay, to think through my mind, Lord. Lord, the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple, Lord. Lord, we thank you for light. We thank you for more light, Lord. Hallelujah. And we'll give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn in your Bibles to two openings. And some of you might have um, some of you might have a physical book or you might have a tablet, but that's okay. Follow follow along. You know, I heard there were um, two people disputing, you know, one, one had a tablet, you know, and another one had a book. They said, well, this is the real word of God. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> the, the man with the tablet held up his, you know, his device. Well, this has the Bible in it. He says, yeah, but the difference is this never loses its power. <laughs> There's no battery, in other words. <laughs> Amen. But that's okay. I'm grateful for the technology that we have today. I, I really am. Amen. Thank you, for Lord. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 18. Matthew 18 and Luke chapter 10. And just give me a second here. I'm just going to get a little more situated here. Thank God for this pulpit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So grateful, Lord. So Matthew 18, starting, excuse me, starting in verse 13. And when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, 
who do men say that I am? I, the Son of God, the Son of Man, am. So they said, they, they said to him, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah the prophets. And he said to them, his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered him and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And he said unto, and, and I say unto you, Peter, upon this rock. Now, I just want to point something out. Peter was not the rock. Okay? In the he, Greek, that's a small stone. But Jesus was pointing, referring to himself. And upon this church, Jesus, I will build my church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And here's the verse I want to um, highlight. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now the actual Greek says it this way. Whatever you forbid on heaven, excuse me, whatever you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. And in Luke chapter 10, stir, excuse me, Luke chapter 10, stir, starting in verse 17, says, And the 70 return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us in your name. And he said unto them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give unto you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Tonight, I want to talk about the authority of the believer. And if you've known me, you've known my ministry, you know that that's my passion. That's one of my favorite um, um, topics to teach on. That doesn't mean that's not the only thing I teach on. I teach on other things. I teach on grace. I'll teach on sin. I'll teach on repentance. But there'll always be a, a flavor of authority. Um, because God wants us to understand that we have authority in this life. We have authority over everything that Satan throws at us, everything the world throws at us, everything that, um, that comes against you in this life. We have authority. We can overcome everything that is thrown at us in life. There is nowhere in the Bible that where God tells us to accept defeat. Nowhere. God hasn't put a moratorium on our authority. I'm going to take this microphone off here. I didn't know how long I was going to be able to just stay confined. But All right, here we go. <laughs> we have authority. Jesus delegated to us authority. We can overcome everything anything that is thrown at us in life. There is nowhere in the word of God where God said you cannot use your authority. But talking to a lot of believers, you'd think there was. God doesn't say, well, you could use your authority over this, but you can't use your authority over that. No, everything you as an individual, everything that faces you, God has given you authority to overcome. You see? He hasn't put a moratorium on our authority. Nowhere in the word of God has he put a moratorium on our authority. He never says, no, you can't use your authority. He hasn't, you see? In fact, he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, he says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph, you see? And diffuses his fragrance everywhere you go. I'm paraphrasing it. Everywhere you go, diffusing the fragrance of his knowledge everywhere you go. You know, when people see us live in victory, that speaks of God's knowledge. You see? Amen. Amen. We are never to accept defeat. Amen. Amen? Now, Jesus gave them, he gave his disciples authority over demons. You see? And... Um, when we, when we don't use the authority, then, then, then nature is just going to take its course. But we can overcome everything that comes at us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what is authority? 
Authority is simply delegated power. You see? God delegated to you his authority. It's like, um, it's like let's say you have a business. You own a business. And your father tells you to, uh, your, your father gives you a business to run. And he says, this is your business. It's up to you to keep, it, to keep the uh, troublemakers out. You see? It's up to you to exercise your authority and to overcome. You see? Um, God wants you to be free today. He wants every one of us to be free. He doesn't want us to suffer defeat in any area of our lives. You see? But if we don't use our authority, if we don't understand that he's given us that authority, then God, God there's nothing God can do about it if we don't exercise our authority. You see? And what amazes me is um, a lot of, you know, a lot of believers, and I'm, I'm just saying this in love, is when, when something comes at you in life and you pray and, and nothing happens, then God doesn't tell us to throw in the towel. He doesn't tell us, well, uh, that's it. There's nothing we could do. No, he tells you to resist. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. You see? So there's a part that we have to play, that we have on our end to resist the enemy. You see? Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many want to be free tonight? Amen. How many people here are fighting sickness in their body? Or an ailment? You could be free tonight. You can be free. You're looking at somebody up here that should be either dead or severely crippled and paralyzed. You see? I fell in my contracting years. I fell 13 different times. I mean, it's embarrassing to admit, but for the glory of God, I, you know, I share it, you know? 13 different times from a, 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 sp a span of, of 16 feet to 24 feet, I've fallen. But you know what? I did not accept it. I did not accept my circumstance. I did not accept my situation because I know that it wasn't God's will for me to be hurt. Now, it was m through my, you know, carelessness that that happened. But I knew through God's word, I knew through the authority that he's delegated to me that I can overcome this situation. That I, when I was laying on the ground, when I was hurt, when my ankle was broken, that I could take authority over that situation and overcome it. Why? Because he gave me his word. He told me I could do it. You see? And if it didn't happen, sometimes it didn't happen right away. But I had to overcome. I had to resist. I had to use my authority. I didn't just say, well, God, you know, it's up to you to do this. Now, don't, don't misunderstand me. God is sovereign, and he could do things out of his sovereignty, you see? But what he promised in his word, we could stand on and expect it to happen. We don't have to wait for a chance. Well, by chance, you know, I might get a miracle. No, we could believe God. Amen. We could stand on his word and take authority over our situation. You see, he gave us authority. Say it. Say, I have authority. I have authority. Hallelujah. We have authority. And I'm going to keep it simple tonight. Okay. Is that all right? Kiss. Keep it simple. Saints. You thought I was going to say stupid. I, that was the trick. I don't call people stupid. We have authority. You see? And I refused to accept that situation. But sometimes you have to resist. Resist the devil and he will flee. You have to get to the point where you're not going to accept defeat. You have to get to the point where you say, no, this is not God's will. And I'm going to press in. I'm going to press through. I'm going to stand on his word and take authority over this situation. And I'm going to overcome. Amen. We can overcome. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Jesus said you have authority over demons. Listen, demons are demons. Jesus didn't say, well, you have authority over this demon, but you don't have authority over that demon. No, you have authority over every 
demon, every foul spirit that comes at you in the name of Jesus. Now, I know I'm combining a few things here. Not everything is the devil. The devil didn't make me fall. The devil didn't push me off that roof, okay? <laughs> it was my carelessness, okay? But what the devil did try to do, he tried to get me to think that I can't overcome this, you see? But you have to renew your mind. How do you renew your mind? With the Word of God. Listen, it's so important, so important to stay in an atmosphere of faith. It's so important. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Keep the Word of God going. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I have a routine. My, my finger goes right to the button on my podcast, and I just keep the Word of God flowing. Because I don't want to give the devil one second of my mind to put unbelief and doubt in my mind. We have a part to play. We have a part to play. There's a Godward side and there's a manward side. What does that mean? The Bible says that we are workers together with him. You see? We have to cooperate with him. You know, we have these, uh, these cliches in the body of Christ. Cliches that are... That, they're just not scriptural because a believer, and again, I'm not trying to be harsh, okay? So just hear my heart, okay? I love you. I just want people to be free. But we have, I, I just have to tell it like it is. You know, we have believers in the body of Christ, and they, they face a situation, and, and their, their prayers don't get answered after one minute, after one hour, after one day, after one week, well, I guess it wasn't God's will. What? You mean that's it? You mean so, so, you didn't, you, so it didn't come to pass for you. It didn't happen for you. So you think in your mind, you think, well, that's it. So you're just going to throw in the towel? You mean there's no resisting? There's no seeking the Lord and say, Lord, where am I missing it? I'm not, I'm not trying to, look, I... I like to be challenged. I love to be challenged. I love to get around people that are going to challenge me. Je you know, Jesus didn't make it complicated. He really didn't. When someone came to him to be healed, if you, Jesus, will, you can heal me, he said, sure, I will. He didn't say, I am the bridge over troubled waters. <laughs> he didn't give him some theological. Well, he said, sure, no problem. Yeah, sure. Don't, you know, don't, don't, don't you have friends? Don't you love your, the, the friends you, you get around? And, and you know, you could just, like, you know, like, you could just, they'll be real with you, you know? You get around, yeah, no problem. Sure, no problem, you know? It's like you, you got that connection, yeah. <laughs> you know, no problem. I will, Jesus said. So that's it? You mean, your prayer to get it? So then... What, what we do, what, what people do is that they try to bring God down to their level and they try to analyze it and say, well, you know, we don't know and we don't. I, we do know. We have a whole Bible. Look, we have Genesis to Revelation. God told us, and especially in the New Covenant, the New Covenant, you know, the epistles, you ever read the epistles? Paul said, to whom he is made known, to whom he has made known the riches of his grace, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The epistles tell us, tell us, give us that revelation of what happened after Jesus rose. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He put the comforter, he put the teacher on the inside of us. Jesus said, he said, it's important that I go away. Because then the comforter won't come, the Holy Spirit. But when he goes away, he will be with you and shall be in you. Amen. Amen. So there's a part we have to play. Look, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 23. And Jesus said, to him, he said, if anyone love me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him, and I will come to him and make my abode. He who does not love me does not keep my, uh, 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 he who does, 
he who does not love me does not keep my word. Now watch this. In Luke 6, 47, why do you call me Lord and do not the things I say? Now, I know that that could apply to good, healthy living, you know, holy living. I understand that. But let's go a little deeper, shall we? For whoever comes to me, hears my sayings and does them, I will show you who he was like. He's like a man building his house on the rock who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently against the house, it could not be shaken, for it is founded on the rock. Now, clearly, Jesus is telling us that we have to do something to make us strong and stable so when the winds, when the storms of life come at us, and there will be storms, I don't preach that we don't have problems. I don't preach that we don't have challenges. But by the word of God, we overcome them. Paul said, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Take on to you the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. See? And one of the, one of the armor is the shield of faith. Above all, take the shield of faith where which, where with you may be able to quench, quench, quench. If there's a fire down here, you could quench it. When a fire comes at your life, when a dart hits you, whether it's sickness, whether it's a financial attack, you do not have to say, oh, well, I guess I don't know. Come on. Let's grow up a little. You still love me? <laughs> All right, we could quench that dart. We don't have to throw in the towel. Oh, hallelujah. Whoever comes to me, hears my sayings and does them. You remember when Peter was in the boat? Remember when Peter was fishing, right? Peter the fisherman. And, he, and they toiled all night and got nothing. And Jesus said, um, he said, throw out your nets. And here's Jesus telling a fisherman, and Peter said, well, Lord, I, you know, we toil, we toil all day, got nothing, but nevertheless, at your word, I will throw out my net. Throw out one net. Jesus said nets. So he, he partially obeyed, but that's okay. So he threw out his net, and you know the story. He got the fish. He had to act on the word of God. Oh, well. That was Jesus coming up to him personally. Well, he's in you. Come on. He's in you. He's on the inside of you. If that same spirit, Romans 8, 11, raise Christ from the dead, he that dwells in you shall also quicken, make alive your mortal body. Hallelujah. He's in you. Be conscious of the fact that God is in you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The greater one is in me. What can I overcome? And the fact of the matter is, he's, he's already accomplished it. If you read the epistle, that's why it's so important to meditate in the epistles. Because it talks about the finished work of Jesus. He's already done it. He took it on the cross. So you don't have to take it. But he who hears my sayings and does nothing is like a man who built his house on the, rock, on the earth without a foundation against which the streams beat vehemently and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house is, was great. There's no defeat for the child of God. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. There's defeat for a believer. If you don't act on the word of God, there's, there's defeat. We got, like I said, we got these cliches. Well, God is in control. Well, again, God is in control to the degree that you cooperate with him. God is not the CEO of your personal destruction. He is not. The Bible says every good and every perfect gift comes from above. No good thing will he withhold. Hallelujah. Isn't the word of God wonderful? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So it's important when we exercise our authority to base it on the word of God, to meditate on the word, of God, get the word of God so on the inside of you that you have no doubt, that you know, that you know, that you know. 
what happened when Joshua, right? Now, when we think of Joshua, right? Us Pentecostal, I'm, I'm a Pentecostal. I know different denominations, people from different uh, faith denominations come here. That's great. I'm a Pentecostal, you know. You know, we're talking Jericho marches and, and all that. But what's the first thing you think of, the first thing you think of when, when you think of, um, of Joshua, right, you think of the walls, right? You think of the walls of Jericho coming down, and they marched around the walls, and they blew the trumpet, and the walls came down. Come on. Ah. <laughs> That's me all the way, Pentecostal. But you know what? Before those walls came down, before he shouted, you know what God told Joshua to do? Verse, chapter 1, verse 8, And this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night to observe all that I have written. Then you shall make your way prosperous. Then you shall have good success. Before God told Joshua to shout, he told Joshua to get into the word and meditate on it. Then he's ready for the shout. You're not going to be, you could shout all you want. You can come up to a situation, shouting doesn't, I mean, it'll help you emotionally, but you got to get the word down here. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who, tr uh, uh, blessed is he who trusts, let me, let me get it. Psalm 1 is, is, the, is, the, is the parallel. Blessed is he that, thank you, blessed is he that walks not in the counsel of the young godly, you know, sits in the seat of the scorner, that walks in the way of the, of the sinner. I'm paraphrasing. But what? His delight is in the word of the Lord. And in his word does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. That's God's word. Amen. Run. I'm telling you, if you're, if you're facing a battle, the worst thing you could be is around. I'm not saying to be rude, but you need to be, you need to be, uh, you need to be in an answer for faith. I'm telling you, you know, I will not hang around people that, that say, well, oh, God may not do it. Well, thank you, but goodbye. You know, I'm not rude. I'm not being rude. You know, there's a, there's a man I follow, um, I follow. I mean, I listen to Jerry Seville. Have you ever, anybody heard of Jerry Seville? His daughter, Terry, he tells a story. It's a powerful story. But, you know, I, I like um, Smith Wigglesworth. How many ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth? Okay. He said, God is more eager to answer than we are to ask, he says. Now, this is a man that raised 17 people from the dead. You think, you think we could learn a thing, for, a thing or two from him? <laughs> you know, he I know I'm kind of going on a little rabbit trail here, but he, he tells, he, there's a story of how, um, he, he, now this man was so, was, was, was so consumed with the presence of God and so consumed with the word that he had no doubt that when he prayed for people that things were going to happen. And sometimes he didn't pray for people. Sometimes he says, no, you got to get right with God. He said, I'm not praying. One time someone called, called him to, um, said he wanted to pray. A, a very wealthy man in the, in the community came to him for prayer. And he was about to pray for him. And he said, he said, I'm not praying for you. And he started to read his mail. God showed him all the, all the wicked things he was doing. And he rebuked him. You know that man came back to Smith later and repented and got healed? But he tells a story of how, you know, this woman... Um, this, uh, this, is all, this is all under the umbrella of authority, okay? So covering different, you can't really, you know, you can spend weeks on authority, you know? Um, but he, um, a man, they brought, they brought a cancer, um, um, a man on a stretcher who's dying of stomach cancer, and he was in his, you know, hospital gown, and they brought him up to the altar. It was a, you know, a healing line, see? And, um, and Smith um, saw this man, and they said, what's wrong with you? And he's, Smith was a very, very gruff, you know. What's wrong with you? He had a, like a very like, English accent. Well, he's dying of stomach cancer, and he punched him in the stomach. Huh? Now, I don't want to scare anybody here. I'm not going to punch anybody, okay? <laughs> but if God tells, you know, Jesus spit in, the, spit in the mud. So if God, now this is a man that raised 17 people from the dead. So if Smith Wiggles, if you hear about Smith Wigglesworth punching something, you know it was God, right? So he punched him. He, put, he got, 
pow, like that, in the stomach. And this man went, he died. <laughs> and the doctor looked up and said, you killed him. The family's going to sue you. And Smith went, he's ill, like that. This English accent. And he just went on praying for people. Well, as, as Smith Wigglesworth, as Smith was praying for people, right? He was, he was you know, a few people down. All of a sudden, this man who, who died <laughs> gets up. says, I'm healed. <laughs> and Smith Wigglesworth was now here, but here's the moral of it, what, what, I'm, what I'm getting at. So, so Smith Wigglesworth was, was, um, he, was pr- he was praying for people, and this man taps him on the shoulder and says, look, I'm healed. And, then Smith, and Smith said, well, go on, praise God for it. And he just keeps praying. See, to, to Smith, it was no big deal. You got to get to the point where you are so close to the realm of the spirit, the realm of the spirit, that things are possible, that you believe all things are possible. See? Because you can base it on the word. There was a man, a, a man, I'll get back to Jerry. There was a man, there was a, a boy who went to heaven. Um, now he's a man, but he, he, God supernaturally, just sovereignly took him to heaven. And, and he wrote a book about it. I saw heaven. And, um, and one of the things, I mean, so many, so many things. He said, I mean, all these phenomenal things. Anyway, but toward the end, at the end of his at the end of his, his tour of heaven, he said that there was a storehouse full of things that we should be going into, the realm of the Spirit, pulling down those blessings. I don't, I don't understand it, but hey, I don't have to understand it, see? And he said, he said, this should not, Jesus said, this should not be full. These warehouses should not be full. We're supposed to be going into the realm of the Spirit and pulling down our blessing. It's available. Now, we can have wrong motives, of course. God's not going to heal, heal it like one preacher said. I, I like, you know, Brother Copeland said, God's not going to heal you so you could be comfortable watching television. See? <laughs> well, he said that, and he said Jesus sat down on a, on a rock and, and, and started to cry. He said Jesus has emotion. See, he's not moved by emotion, but he has it. And he said this, and Jesus said, why don't people take me at my word? Why don't my children take me at my word? Don't they know that I have all power in heaven and in earth to back up what I say? And he said, what happens is, he says, he said, the angel is right there, right there, ready to, ready to come into the natural with your blessing. And all of a sudden we say, well, I, I guess it wasn't God's will. Listen, your words have power. It's from Genesis to Revelation. Your words have power. He says, when you say that, you're giving, you're just, you're, you're sending the angel back with your blessing. So Jerry Seville's daughter, Terry, her fingers, her fingers were, were cut off. She was in the, in the nursery and a rocking t- chair, you know, cut, cut her fing- fingers off. And the babe's screaming and crying. And they, they brought her back into the service and he was listening to somebody else. And, and the preacher who was, who was preaching, was unmoved. He just praised the Lord in Jesus' name. He prayed and the baby stopped. Well, Jerry took him, took him to the doc, took Terry to the doctor. And the doctor, of course, said, and he was, a, incidentally, was, uh, was Buddhist, the doctor, very nice man, very professional. He said, he threw the tips in the garbage, said, your daughter will never, have, never be the same again. That's it. And Jerry made a declaration. He said, doctor, he said, my daughter will have fingers again. Yeah. And the doctor pulled his wife aside and said, look, I know your husband's in shock and, you know, you're young and everything. He said, no, we, we believe it. Well, he said for two weeks, they bent, put in, for two weeks, he kept the unbelief out. He kept people out that were not going to speak words of faith. And he put his nose in the word of God and he believed God. And he took his daughter, Terry, back to the doctor that Buddhist doctor, and he had no doubt what he was going to see. The doctor took the bandages out, and he screamed, Ah, my God. He said, What? He said, Look, fingers. Perfect, with nails. And to this day, there's still a scar. And Jerry says, That's the covenant. God left that as the covenant, the scars. Listen, we do not have to accept defeat. We have authority. Amen? We have authority over everything 
that hits us in life. Everything. How am I doing on time here? You know, when you get when you preach, you lose track of the time. I've heard of people that watch you stop on them and, you know, everything. So, um, so we, we, have to, we have to make a decision. Listen, you, you have to, one of the keys to operating in your authority is you have to eliminate, and again, I'm repeating, a lot of, things I, a lot of the things I say are obviously overlapping, but, you know, it's good to repeat. You have to eliminate all doubt. All doubt. You have to get to the place where you have absolutely no doubt that God's word is true. You see? And it really is crystal clear. I mean, again, he's given us so much that there's, there's, there's no, um, on, on the things that we need. And again, Jesus made it simple. He said, our father, right? Two words, our father. And he blew away the, the Jewish people that day because they never heard God described as a father. In two words, wow, our father. Well, your father wants you to be free. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be victorious. Now, why? So we could share it with other people so we could win the lost. Amen? I, I don't preach. I'm not a, a defeat preacher. I don't preach that sometimes God wants you defeated and sometimes God wants you victorious. That's just not scriptural. God wants you free, my brothers and sisters. He wants you free from everything that holds you down. There is not one thing that's holding you down that God does not want you free of. Nothing. And anyone who tells you otherwise is telling you something that is, that is against the word of God. You still love me? We have to eliminate all doubt. All right. Is it okay if I tell you what Jesus said? <laughs> right? After all, he's the, he's the, he's the, um, he's the, uh, the king, right? He's the author and finisher of our faith, right? Back, back to the delay. So when something doesn't take place, something doesn't happen right away, um, understand that in the realm of the spirit, in God's eyes, it's done. You see? And Jesus gave us this illustration, right? He cursed a fig tree in Mark 11, right? You know the story. He walked by a fig tree. There was no figs on it. And Jesus cursed it. He was giving an illustration. He said, you, he says, you, you are cursed. And the Bible says the disciples heard it. So Jesus said it loud enough to where his disciples heard it, right? So they went on their way. Nothing happened right away. They came back a few days later. And they said, look, the tree that you cursed is dead, is, is up, up from the roots. Now, here's what Jesus said, okay? So you could take it up with Jesus, all right? Because I'm just telling you what he said, all right? <laughs> and I believe it's true. Have faith in God. For whoever says to this mountain, listen, there's a time to pray and there's a time to say. It is not scriptural to pray that God will remove your mountain. It's just not. God gave you authority. Say, I have authority. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. It's up to you to take authority over it. Behold, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. He said, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Now watch this. And does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things which he says, he shall have whatsoever he says. So, look, if you have a problem with that, you could take it up with Jesus because he's, he's the one that says it, okay? You can't make the word of God not mean what it says because you don't like it personally, okay? And that's what a lot of believers do, unfortunately. They say, well, well, their prayer wasn't answered, so they, 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 they pull it down to their level. They, well, it can't mean that. Yeah, it does mean that. And I've seen it work in my life. It works. Hallelujah. But, but when you get to the point when you have no doubt. Now, now watch this. 2 Corinthians, right? Chapter, chapter 10. And that's where, the, that's where the, well, before I get to that. So, so when, you, when you eliminate all doubt, that's when, that's when things that's when things pop. You know, that's when things pop. Now, 
I'll tell you personally, again, you know, I fell 13 times. And I'm not I'm not bragging on me when I when I say that I was able to overcome all all those all those things. I'm I'm not I'm just really not, okay? I'm just giving glory to God. So I hope you understand my heart, okay? So I can honestly tell you, after 35 years of walking with the Lord, and I'm not exaggerating, honest, okay? I have eliminated all doubt. I and in the area of healing, I I have no doubt. When, it, when a symptom, and it's rare, when a symptom hits my body, right, and I command it to go in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, I have no doubt that it's going to go. I have no doubt. I don't even think about it. Most of the time, I just, I, it takes me about 30 seconds, and I, that's it, done. And then I go my way. Now, some things are persistent. I had, I had uh, several months ago, I had this, like, swelling in my, in my, in my leg, I, I don't know what it was. It was like inflammation, and and of course, a lot of a lot of things have to do with diet. You know, if you know me, I'm I'm a big big health food health food guy. You know, we have to do our part. Amen, amen. You can't you can't eat big gulp. You can't drink big gulps in the morning, cake, and all the stuff, and expect to walk in God's divine health. Hello, you just can't. Oh, I'll pray over it, and and God, no, no, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. How's that working out? Look at all the prayer lines and churches. Look at, look, at, look at what people are going up to be prayed for. Heart disease, sugar diabetes, all this stuff that you could simply correct just by not putting the wrong foods in your body, okay? So, all right, that's my little <laughs> soapbox. But God has mercy. God has mercy on us. But we have to maintain ourselves, amen? All right, anyway, so I had, I had um, some swelling. and I, I mean, It was like painful, like, and, like stiff. And I just said, in the name of Jesus, I just command, get out of my leg in the name of Jesus, like that. And I just went my way. And it persisted, but within, I don't know, 24 hours, it was gone. I had one time, I, I started to like close my, I picked something up, I started to close. It was so painful. I couldn't even, like if I did this, it was, it was like so painful. And I just said, no, get out of here in the name of Jesus. And I didn't even think about it. I, I had no doubt, no doubt. Now, how can I say that? I could say it based on God's word, you see? Not based on my, on just my own my own strength, I could say it based on the word of God, see, that when I command something to go, it has to go, it has to go, you see, and again, if you get into the epistles and read about the finished work of Christ and get that revelation about what he accomplished, he's translated us, He's delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. It's already done. You are in the kingdom. He's made us sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. Meditate in the epistles. So, um, my, my wife, oh, by the way, I, I was remiss. My, my wife couldn't be here. I meant to mention that. Um, my lovely wife, <clears throat> but she's probably watching me from FaceTime. Hello, honey. Love you. <laughs> You'll see her next time. So, <clears throat> um, a few years ago, about four years ago, and then, then she was my fiance. Um, she was taken up with, uh, she got very, very ill, um, high fever, breathing problems we you know we didn't know what it was so she <clears throat> was taken to the hospital and I'm waiting for the report you know and actually she was in Vietnam at the time my wife is Vietnamese um, <clears throat> and so I'm waiting for the report and all of a sudden I see that word come on my, my, my text leukemia now I have a decision to make I have a decision to make I can give in to fear or I could shut that fear down and say no. Now, again, through my through through my meditating in God's word every morning, it's not complicated. It's not a it's not a formula. It's just a lifestyle. Then we when we fill ourselves with God's word, I don't. I'm, this is just me. I don't put this conviction off on any any person. Okay, it's just me. I don't have a TV set. I don't have one. I haven't had a TV in since uh, since 2004. I don't need it. I don't want it. 
I do watch things. I'll put a DVD in my computer. I'll pull up some things on YouTube. So I'm not, you know, I'm not religious. You know what I'm saying? But I, don't, I, I just don't have a TV. I don't, to me, to sit on a couch and click, 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 you know? My God, what, what is a satellite? What do they have, like 300 stations on a satellite? Now, I'd, I'd end up in a mental institution. I'd be flipping, you know? That's a guy thing, thing, right? You just flip. You just click, 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 click. Ah! <laughs> They'd have to take me away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's just me. I I get home. I I, I like to you know I, I like to listen to the word of God. I, but anyway, so so through my meditation in God's word, training my spirit man. See, I said I had to cast down that fear, leukemia. Watch this, Second Corinthians chapter ten. For the weapons of a warfare are not carnal; they're not natural. But they are mighty through God. Now watch this. To the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations or reasonings. And every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when I saw that word leukemia, I had to immediately bring that into the obedience of the words of God and say, no, my wife, my fiance will live and not die. We rebuke that. We Now, here's, here's another key. Now, believe it or not, she didn't know. She, she didn't know she was given a death. She didn't know how severe leukemia was. She was ignorant. And that was actually a blessing. No, it was. Because if she knew how severe, I mean, that really was a death sentence. Leukemia? I mean, that's like, you know. Now, I know people survive it, you know. But she was only in the hospital for one week. Final blood test, no leukemia. We took authority over it. And I fought. I fought that whole week. I said no. I refused to entertain thoughts of, of death. I said, in Jesus' name, I come against it. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? He gave us his word. He gave us his word. His word works. Say it. The word works. It's working mightily in me. Amen. How much time do I have? Keep going? Okay. 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 So, I said I was going to keep it simple. I didn't really get to the, to the meat. Now, now, well, well, here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. So, we, we covered, so, so one of the keys to, to, to operating authority is to eliminate doubt, to stay in faith, and to understand that Satan is a defeated foe. He's defeated. He's already defeated, okay? He's not going to be defeated. He's already defeated, and we're just exercising authority over him. The name of Jesus, okay? So what is, what is the key to operating in authority? How do you actually do it? You know, if someone hands you a jet, uh, keys to a jet, well, you have all that power, but how do you, how do you exercise? How do you, how do you use that power? Well, I'll show you, and I'll close on this. Acts, well, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2, it says, Let this mind, verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who be in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant, and coming into the likeness in, uh, of man, of men, excuse me, and being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death of, of the cross, Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, hallelujah, he made it simple. The name that is above every name. And I'll just, I'll just say this real quick. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John went to pray. And they saw a lame man from, at, at the gate called Beautiful. And they, he, uh, he saw them expecting alms, and they said, Silver and gold have I none, but such have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I'm telling you, there is power in the name of Jesus. He didn't, he didn't make it complicated. He gave you his name. But you have to understand that the greater one is on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Being, being mindful that that 
that his power, his spirit is on the inside of you. One more story, one more quick story. Is that right, Samantha? One more. Okay. John G. Lake. John G. Lake was, um, was an evangelist at the turn of the century. John G. Lake. Um, <clears throat> he's, he's known for, for the, healing, the healing rooms in Spokane, Washington. A documented 100,000 healings in six years. The city of Spokane was so healthy, they, they declared, they, they, the, the medical community declared Spokane the healthiest city in America. They gave them a, a they, they actually, they shut down a hospital. That's how, uh, that's how effective the healing power of God. Because he got them into these healing rooms and he zeroed in and he focused and he told them, get into the word and, and people got healed. It, it, was, it wasn't like, well, maybe they won't. No, they, they went there and they got healed, you see? And, um, but anyway, he, he, he was also a missionary to South, he, before that he was a missionary to South Africa and God showed him God gave him the revelation about authority over, you know, demonic spirits. So he went to this one village with Christians, and they didn't, under, they didn't understand their authority. And these witch doctors were wreaking havoc. And he said, and he said well, why don't you cast the devil out of these witch doctors? And he said, what? He said, cast the devil? They'll cast the devil out of us. They didn't understand their authority, you see? And this one witch doctor put a spell on another witch doctor. John G. Lake witnessed this and the guy, you know, fell down off his horse and he, he went, you know, he, he, he saw him on the ground. He started turning blue and he laid hands. He says, come out of him in the name of Jesus. The witch doctor got up and got, you know, um, received Jesus. And, and anyway, revival took place in, the, in that city and, um, and, and witch doctors got saved because the people, he, he taught their people, the people, their authority in Christ, you see? John G. Lake was a man, you know, he learned that when you, when, when you tap into this authority, you have no fear. One time they, uh, there was a crazed man, an insane man, and in, in, in a, in a, um, he was so, he was a violent man, and they locked him up in this room, and John G. Lake said, open the door. He said, what? He's going to rip you apart. Open the door. He says, give me the key. Open the door. They shut the door, and this man was like threatening John G. Lake, I'm going to kill you, and this was like a big man. John G. Lake didn't have an ounce of fear. Just sit there, very, very calm. We had that. I've, I've witnessed, you know, did soul, and I do soul witnessing on the street. There are times people threaten me. I just stood there and said, <sighs> you know, no, no fear. No, really, no fear. No fear at all. Anyway, he looked this man in the eyes, and this man, uh, long story short, this man just fell down and wept, and, and, and that demon came out of him. And he walked out of that room with a, with a delivered man. So we have to understand our authority. Listen, I'm closing, closing my Bible. God wants you free from everything that holds you. Whether it's sickness, whether it's depression, everything. There is not one thing, nothing, that you have to stay bound to. Not one second. You don't have to live in defeat for one second. The shield of faith wherewith we quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we praise you, Father. I pray that this had value and substance to the people, the hearers here today, Lord, and that we would operate in authority. We'd overcome. We'd be a greater light in this darkness, Lord. I'm not going anywhere, Lord. You call me to be here on this earth. I'm not afraid. I don't care what evil is in this earth. We as the body of Christ will rise up in our authority and change the very atmosphere around us. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. Thank you for listening.